Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. It's Friday, May 26th. Another question from a viewer, viewer Anon Mist, asking, is Merrick Garland a wolf in sheep's clothing, just like William Barr? It's a fair question. Uh, there's not been a lot that's come out of the um, Attorney General's office other than the Durham report, and he let that one go through, but without really saying much about it. And so I guess the, what I want to know is when it comes time for Merrick Garland to show courage with indictments, and it sounds like that's imminent, will he have the courage to delve into a darkness that this country hasn't seen before as far as uh, indicting a former president or holding the former president and the people that uh, supported him accountable for their actions. So far, I mean, uh, the AG's office uh, has prosecuted hundreds of people in the January 6th insurrection, including uh, getting uh, seditious conspiracy, char conspiracy convictions against the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. So I think William Barr might have had something to say about that. So I really don't think they're the same. But will Garland show the courage when the courage is needed? Okay. Looking, evaluating, planning. He, and I think that's been, he's been described this way. He is a great thinker, which is why Biden <laughs> threw a tweet out there once. It's like, get off your butt and start doing stuff. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Um, and contemplating things. He, he, this man plans and he thinks. He plans and he thinks. He plans and he thinks. Sometimes you think so much you fall asleep. Will he have the courage to do it? Well, he's going to plan on it and he's going to think really hard. And if he comes to a decision to do it, understand this was not a knee-jerk reaction. This is a well-thought-out uh, position. Again, William Barr thought things out too. It's just supporting democracy. It wasn't among the agenda items for him. In the past, we have the Page of Wands. This is going forward. I think this is going, when he's new in the Department of Justice, going in there and having to clean up the mess and the corruption that was allowed to, um, that was allowed to fester and grow under the previous administration. I think we can reasonably assume that uh, some good people left the DOJ and bad people took their places and moved into positions of power. And it's taken Garland a while to try and remove those people or move them out of the way so that if a decision needed to be made, that decision could be made. The current situation is just the bedazzling amount of choices and things that you have to contemplate both good and bad, you know, if I go, if I, no, if you indict the president, what are the good things? What are the bad things about this? If I don't indict him, what are the good things? What are the bad things? If he flees and I let him, what are the good things and what are the bad things? So right now he's looking, he's, um, he's looking at the whole picture. He's not just looking at one aspect of things. He looks at all aspects of it. You know, again, with um, the Seven of Cups, if you have a jury trial, you've got, what, 15, 20%, 30% of this country that are fanatical Trump uh, uh, fanboys and would never convict him. I mean, it's it's amazing that like uh, the E. Jean Carroll case, they managed to get uh, nine people to convict him. So I think it's also part of the, as time goes by and Trump becomes a bit less relevant, it's easier to... Um, to get fairer, more impartial juries because that political chargedness is gone. <sighs> Overarching energy is, uh, you know, it's a, a big push. Um, and it's, it's financial. I'd, obviously, I don't think this is health related. Um, this is probably, though, looking at the health and wealth of the country, the democracy, and the judicial system. This impacts all of those things because these cases go that high. But as um, as Lena would tell you, that gate 
right there, that gate is, if you don't learn your lesson, you're doomed to repeat it and you'll keep coming through this. So this is a very big thing because again, it affects the health and the wealth of this country and the citizenry therein. I think you've got the right intellectual person in there to do that. And the lesson to be learned is you gotta make a choice. The United States is at a crossroads. What are you going to do that's in the best health, best choices for the health of the country? Because if you choose poorly, you're bound to repeat that same issue. Outcome. The devil and being chained to the devil. Um, this all deals with Trump. And do we stay chained to him? And do we still ch stay chained to the ideas that you no know, America had no problems and was the greatest country in the world? Or do we unshackle ourselves from that and realize that, no, we're not. We've got really big issues that we need to deal with here. Big issues, big, ugly issues that have not gone addressed. But underneath it all is justice. Underneath it all is justice. Will he do the right thing? He'll do the right thing, but it's not going to be easy and it's going to be ugly. So is he a wolf in sheep's clothing? No, I don't think he is. I think he's going to um, he's going to do what needs to be done or okay what needs to be done and we're in for a wild ride. All right. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.